live up in the digital cloud. Our family does not send status updates. Our family does not care what you are wearing. We only care that you are clothed. Our family does not care where or, or what you eat. We only care that you are fed. Our family knows the truth. And the truth is that you are all special. You are all engaging. That you are all fantastic and capable and wonderful. Something is coming. You can feel it, can't you? The world is reaching its tipping point. We are hooked. And we are blind to our obsessions. And our obsession is consumption, relentless consumption. You see, we need to have the next best phone. And then to go with that phone, we need a new watch, or we need the best glasses. And then we need a, a new bag to put all of our stuff in. And then, of course, we need, well, we need streaming music. And we need streaming TV and streaming movies and streaming news and then streaming opinion and streaming truth and streaming lies and lies and lies screaming in our heads. And we consume without purpose. And we consume without reason. And we consume without regard for one another. We consume all. And that is our sin, greed. And we drift down the corridors of consumerism. And we've got our phones and our pads pressed up against our faces, not stopping, never taking notice to the pain and the suffering of those around us. Because we need to race to upload photos of our pets or, or our meals or our bodies. Mm. Look at me. See what I have done? See what I am in this moment? I'm special. I'm smart. I'm funny. I'm pretty. That is the travesty because we are all special. We are all smart. But yet we seem to, to, to need the desperate approval of some digital friends that we hardly even know when your family and your loved ones are right here sitting beside you and all you have to do is believe it but you see we live in a world without confidence all of us desperately searching for some approval from a like button and why where is our confidence where is our faith i have confidence i have faith let me be the well that you drink from to fill yourself up. I am your father, and you are my children. And together we will march to Eden's gate. Something is coming. You can feel it, can't you? Every time that we look at a headline, it's all confusion and distrust, fear, anger. You can feel that we are creeping towards the edge. And there will be a reckoning. And that is why we started this project. We know what happens next. They come for us. They try to take from us. They try to take our guns. They try to take our freedom. They try to take our faith. Because that is what they do. They smash our world into a million little pieces. And they tell us to pick them all up and rebuild. And they do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, but not this time. Not here. We will not let their greed. We will not let their immorality. We will not let their depravity hurt us. 
no more suffering. And I know that you were out there. And I know that you were in pain. But my children, I'm here to tell you that suffering is a choice. And you can choose a better path. We love you. We want you. We accept you. And we will take you. Willingly or not. And some of you may fight, but our love will quell your bullets, and our truth will calm your mind. And in the end, you will thank us. I am your father, and you are my children. And together, we will march to Eden's gate. My children. As it says in Joel 3.10, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. We must put down any, any who would try and stop us from saving our souls. John proved his devotion in blood. How can we do any less? Together, we will march to Eden's gate. A mighty upheaval shall curse the nations of man. Blood will stain the soil as the cries of the judge erupt in a chorus of anguish. The blade of righteousness shall cull the herd and smite the skeptic. And from the ashes of this great extinction, you shall lead your family to return to the angels you once were. To the left and right of you are your brothers and sisters. Get to know one another. Embrace one another as a family would. For together, we will march hand in hand unto Eden. When these doors close, what lies beyond the walls will be nothing but a wasteland. The smoldering remains of a nation full of cruelty, hypocrisy, and faithlessness. I am your father, and you are my children. And as such, I have sheltered you from the violent storm that approaches us. We will not look at the lives we have left behind. We will look forward to the opportunities laid before us. Not given, but earned. Welcome to the future. I'm so glad we're all here to share it together. And while that chapter ends, a new one begins for all of you. One of peace harmony and love, one where you will come to accept me as your father, one where you will feel the warmth of my love, my children, my chosen. If you are hearing these words, then the collapse has arrived. The next chapter in your lives begins now. You have been selected for a very special cause, a very important cause. For you are the creators of the new Eden. You are the warriors of the project. Therefore, you must prepare for what comes next. Because the ones who were left behind are coming. The desperate, the selfish, the sinners. They will all want what is ours. And they will try to take it from us. Remember, our people and our resources are precious. You must defend the seeds of humanity with your life. The gates of Eden must stay sealed. My children, the enemy will be strong, but we will be stronger. Do you remember the way it used to be in the garden? Of course not. We only have the fantasies from someone else's books. I don't want fantasy. I want to live in the garden. That's what we're going to do. Long ago, before the ideas of war and hatred consumed us, we were given a wondrous gift, the gift of life. We lived our days and nights in the warmth of community. We required no protection, for there was no threat. We knew nothing of death, for there was only life. 
Our world was a beautiful garden. We lived as angels in perfect harmony. All was provided for us, but a few among us were not satisfied. Despite all we had been given, despite all we enjoyed, those few among us wanted more. They did not share, they coveted. They rejected our garden and perverted our gifts. Generosity was replaced with acquisition. Fellowship replaced with self. Give replaced with take. And we replaced with them. Greed spread like a plague, infecting the world with envy and discontent. Thus began the cycle of binge and purge that traps humanity to this day. Strife, then peace, then strife again. We have wandered aimlessly, consuming everything and everyone. We have elected leaders that do not lead and fought wars with no purpose. They mock us, sneer at us, push us to the gutter and expect us to bow to them, praise them, elect them. How is it that one child wants for nothing while the child next door goes to bed hungry? How is it that the fat politician in his gilded office can dictate to the starving farmer what he can and cannot sell? Who is to blame? The privileged, the wealthy, the elite. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Proverbs 19.17 I do not come from privilege. I do not come from wealth. I come from poverty. I come from despair. I come from a world that is ignored. But now it is we few who are not satisfied. We few who yearn for more. And we must seize this moment and act. We must fight for our freedom from this society of self and return to the angels we once were. For God himself has spoken to me and provided a glorious mandate. We and we alone have been chosen to survive this calamity and rebuild. We are all angels and we few are set on a path back to the garden. We are the project at Eden's gate, a family of refugees cast from the world, bruised by rejection. Each of us has yearned for fellowship only to be deafened by hateful words or struck by the blows of contemptuous fists. Each of us has carried labels designed to minimize, marginalize, dehumanize, or separate us. And the terrible weight of this has forced our gaze downward and fixed our eyes far from the light of truth. The truth that all of us were once perfect, were once angelic. But my children, God sees us, God hears us. Humanity has reached a threshold and it must change or perish. This world is filled with demons they will try to tempt you, to stop you. We know this will happen. You only need to believe in yourself and walk the path. Does this feel like the path of a madman? Would you let others deny you what you deserve? You deserve this. Don't let them take it away from you. So we must be strong. And we must be vigilant. Because those on the outside will see what we have built here together in our new Eden. The love. And they will come. And they will try to take from us all that we have built. This is not what we were meant for. This is not what we fought for. Our path diverges from the outside world now and forevermore. 
If you are hearing these words, then there is hope. Hope is the rock on which we build our future. Know that you are not alone. Know that you are loved. We are a family. I am your father. You are my children. And together we will march to Eden's gate. We must give thanks to God. The day I have prophesied to you has arrived. Everything I told you has come true. The authorities who tried to take me from you are now in the loving embrace of my family. Save for one, but this wayward soul will be found. They will be punished. And in the end, they will see our glorious purpose. We stand on the edge of a great chasm. Below us is the fate of mankind. Humanity has grown numb to the machine of strife that it has created. But we cannot 